Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight, we escape with the pilot of an experimental jet rocket aircraft about to be hurled 40 miles out from the Earth's surface into the limitless boundaries of space where he receives the most terrible warning in the history of man from which there is no escape. As Graham Dorr tells it in his thrilling and widely discussed story, The Outer Limit, starring Frank Lovejoy. Settle down, men. Okay, Colonel. Yes, sir. All of you will want to know why we took you what out of whatever warm beds you were in. Got a reason. The RJX-1. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The RJX-1. The top, top secret experimental rocket jet aircraft. We've been babying it, nursing it, staying up nights with it for 16 months now. This morning, Major Westfall is going to wean it. Bill is going to take her out and beat her up to death. I can't impress upon you men how extraordinary this flight is. It's an eight-rocket ship. That's what I said, eight rockets. Eight rockets designed to take man into areas of space that have never been explored before. And at a rate of speed to which no pilot has yet been subjected. Some of you men have already flown many times the speed of sound, so I don't have to tell you very much. Yo? Yes, Colonel? You'll lead the F-86s. You and the other three jet boys will be Bill's chase planes. We want observation at 35,000 feet. Yes, sir. Okay, here's how it plays. Pull the curtains on the map, will you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. You see it circled here, your rendezvous point. We designate it Point X. It's roughly over Boulder Dam. Zero hour is 0900. Joe, you and your jets will take off at zero minus 15. You got that? Yes, sir. You F-86s will make conventional climbs to 30,000 feet. Rendezvous at point X and call in to meet control at 35,000 feet. Right, Joe? That cuts it, Colonel. Oh, no, wait a minute. Not quite. Now we hear about the weather. Pete? Yes, Colonel. Well, the weather's very pretty out, boys. All clear, ceiling unlimited. Winds aloft at 10,000, 80 MPH, 25,000, 140 MPH, 40,000, 150 MPH. Estimated temperature, 45 below at 40,000 feet. There's some scattered clouds northwest of Point X at 15,000 feet. Stratus at 30,000 feet, 30 miles east of Point X, east. We expect no change for three hours. That's it, sir. Okay, Pete. Joe, you and your boys go unwrap your F-86s. Have a nice time. Yes, sir. Come on, boys. Major Westfall. Major Westfall, stick around. I want to talk to you. Okay, Hank. How are you feeling, Bill? No, <laughs> why? You worried, Hank? Don't worry. Look, Bill... You've got only 10 minutes of rocket fuel. Get rid of those jets before you fire the rockets. Fire only one, one rocket, rocket at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, look, I'll be listening in on the public address of control. I won't bother you until you're airborne. It'll be between you and the tower until then. All right, don't worry, Hank. I'm going to fly that baby higher and faster than anybody ever did before, just like you said. I'm going to take it up, and I'm going to bring it back. And then you and I will have dinner together, hmm? Zero minus three. Zero minus... Good morning, Colonel. Mr. Hargrove. You'll be here at the control with me? It's all right with you, Colonel. I wouldn't have it any other way. You've checked the communications equipment, Sergeant? Oh, yes, sir. Major Westfall's been assigned a special radio frequency at 3970. I've... Good, good. You'll take care of it, Sergeant. We don't want it to poop out or anything like that, do we? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, no, sir. Sir, Hargrove, I got a thing on my mind. That boy in the plane, you... Genius is designed. He's my best boy. It's our best plane, Colonel. It better be. Now it's your turn. What do you got on your mind? 
Everything's in proper order, Colonel. Recording equipment, the television cameras in the cockpit, everything. Every known scientific device, even some unknown. They've been very... We're talking about a man, Hargrove. That's all I really want to get back out of this. What about the man? There may be one difficulty. Tell me about it. I'd like to know. The takeoff, with all that load. The jets, the rockets, all at maximum fuel capacity. Never been tested that way before. Go on, Mr. Hargrove. Well, it's just that Major Westfall has only 6,000 feet to get his ship airborne. If he accelerates from zero to 160 miles per hour in 6,000 feet, he should be airborne in seven seconds. Seven seconds, that makes zero plus G. Yes, Colonel. Beyond zero plus G? Well, beyond that, we... We don't know. We just don't know. Thanks. Thanks for everything, Mr. Hargrove. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Flip your switch on Major Westfall. I hear he's got a swell program. Flip them all, will you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. RJX-1 to tower. Any change in weather? Tower to RJX-1. Barometer reading 29.7. Set your altimeter accordingly. Roger. Wind 15 miles from south. Take off runway 27. Runway 27. Got it. Zero minus 130. Zero RJX-1 to control. Over. Control to RJX-1. Go ahead. This is just for you, Hank. Cabin pressure, okay. Oxygen pressure, okay. All right, all right. Get off the dime, kid. <laughs> Take a pill, Hank. You'll need it to settle your stomach. Zero minus one. RJX-1 to crew one. chief. Over. Crew chief to RJX-1. Go ahead. I'm ready to fire. Hold it. Okay. All set to fire. Clear? Clear. Starting right, jet. Starting left, jet. Zero minus 30 tower seconds. Tower to RJX-1. Zero over. minus 30 seconds. RJX-1 to tower. Go ahead. Western Airlines convoy reported over Ventura. Got it. Eastbound Constellation at 17,000 over Salt Lake. Roger. Western Airlines DC-4 on Base Lake at 1,000 over Burbank. The rest of the air is yours. Thank you so much. Zero minus 10. RJX-1 nine, to tower. Ready eight, for takeoff. Tower seven, to RJX-1. Six, Clear for takeoff. Five. Good luck, Bill. Four. Three. Two, one, zero. He's rolling. Zero He's rolling. B, C, D, E, F, Bill, lift it. G, lift it. A. Lift it, Billy. He made it. Bill made it, Mr. Hargrove. RJX-1 to control. RJX-1 to control. Come in. Control to RJX-1. Go ahead. Everything's great, Hank. It's a doll, baby. Hey, you must have been kidding with that takeoff, weren't you? It took that long to get off. That makes it a takeoff. How fast are you climbing, kid? 1,700 a minute airspeed, 550. Retract your landing gear. It'll help. Oops, sorry. Call me at 20,000. Heading is 87. Everything is real good. Come in, Hank. How do you feel? I like it here. Pressure okay? Okay. F-86 leader to control. F-86 to control. Come in. Control to F-86 leader. Go ahead. F-86 observing RJX-1. He's really tearing, Colonel. Over point exit 35,000. On schedule, Joe? On schedule. RJX-1 to control. RJX-1 to control, come in. Control to RJX-1, go ahead, Bill. 40,000 feet, Hank. Still a doll, baby? Still is. Ready to pressurize. Can you hear me okay, Hank? Coming in fine. Pressurize. Ready to prime rocket system in five seconds. Primed. Dropping right jet. Dropping left jet. All clear. Good luck, Bill. Firing number one rocket. 
fired. Oh! Taken back. Firing number two rocket. Fired. Hey, honey! Okay, Bill, what is it? Bill! Bill, are you receiving me? Control to RJX-1, come in. Come in, RJX-1. Hello, Bill, come in. Control to F-86 leader, control to F-86 leader, come in. F-86 leader to control, go ahead. What about it, Joe? F-86 observing RJX-1. RJX-1 at approximately 60,000 feet. Maintaining a heading of north-northwest. I can barely make him, Colonel. Try calling. Okay. F-86 leader to RJX-1. F-86 to RJX-1, come in. Come in, RJX-1, come in. Mr. Hargrove. F-86 yes, to RJX-1. Share it with me, Mr. Hargrove. F-86 to Sit here and run your fingers through your hair and come in, wait and think about it and share it with me. F-86 to RJX-1. F-86, leader to control. F-86, leader to control. Come in. Go ahead, F-86, leader. We've lost him, Colonel. Stay up there, Joe, for as long as you can. What do we do now, Colonel? I just told you, Mr. Hargrove. We wait. You and me, we wait. We've lost him, Colonel. You haven't lost me. I can hear you, Joe. Stay up there, Joe, for as long as you can. Hello? 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 I'll try another frequency, Joe. RJX1 to F86. Can you make me? RJX1 to F86. Come in. Come in. No good, huh? I'll switch back to Channel Charlie. I still can't get you, Joe. I'll keep sending. Firing number eight rocket. Fired. Oh, brother! Oh, brother! RJX-1 to all you ships at sea, to all you people anywhere. This is Bill Westfall approaching 210,000 feet. That's 40 miles straight up in the air, all you people, and that's where I am. You never saw anything like it. No clouds. A color no one ever named before. And silence. Eight rockets roaring at my tail and I can't hear them. Their sound will never reach me at 1,800 miles an hour. Silence so complete that the ticking of the clock on my instrument panel is a hammer in my brain. Silence. Otherwise, nothing. Nothing except... No, nothing at all. Wait a minute. Yes, there is something all right at two o'clock high. Oh, that's really something, brother. Maybe a flying disc and this is a big one. It's spinning like a top and it's coming toward me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Listen. Something has just happened. Something, a missile, a shot maybe through the canopy. My pressure is going down. Something is happening to me. This disc thing, it's like a magnet. I'm being pilled toward it. I've lost control of my ship. I've no control. I'm going through decompression. I'm on the verge of unconsciousness. I'm blocking on. I'm flat. Can you hear? You are listening to The Outer Limits, starring Frank Lovejoy in another thrilling adventure on Escape. <laughs> He 
had only ten minutes fuel. He's three hours overdue. Well, that's that, Colonel. But wait some more, Mr. Hargrove. There's no point to it. May I make a suggestion, Colonel? What? Give it up. Make your report to Washington. What about you, Mr. Hargrove? To be frank with you, Colonel, in another 16 months, there'll be another plane. The RJX-2. And the Army will give us another man to fly it. Not till we're certain about this man, and we're not certain. What do you propose to do? The things that are in the manual. We'll organize search parties and put spotter planes up in the air. Maybe Bill came down on the ocean. We'll call the Navy in. Colonel, if the RJX-1 came down on the ocean, it would sink in three minutes. You know it had no light preserver equipment on it. The added weight of we'll the... We'll call the Navy in. Whatever you say, Colonel. My guess What's is... What's your guess, Mr. Hargrove? My guess is that sometime, somewhere, on some beach or in some field, someone will pick up a piece of torn metal. That someone will be holding what's left of the RJX-1. <laughs> You're aboard the Space Patrol ship S2J3. Am I in communication with you? Can you understand me? Are we in contact? Can you understand now what I am saying to you? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I can understand you. Earthman, your brain is in turmoil, is it not? It has great difficulty in accepting what you see. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Accept it. What you see here exists. Uh, all this? This exists? It exists, Earthman. The spaceship you're on exists. Those jet dynamos you see before you exist. Jet dynamos driven by the harnessed power of a thousand suns. Listen, Earthman. Listen to them. know what happened as you listened, Earthman? We have flung ourselves 10,000 miles into space. What do you say to that, Earthman? Why, well, I, I don't know what to say. It's beyond the conception of your Earth brain. Then conceive this. Try to move, Earthman. You're not bound in any way. Try to move. <coughs> don't strain. It's impossible for you to move. There's a screen of force aimed at you. Now it's turned off. You may move about, Earthman. Proceed, uh. Zeglon. Yes, Commander. Earthman, I perceive that your intellect now accepts the fact. You are aboard Space Patrol Ship S2J3. I am Captain Zeglon of the Galactic Guard. Galactic? Galactic Guard? The Guardian of the Galaxy. The Guardian of the Universes. The instrument the Brotherhood of Worlds has set up in defense against such a civilization as yours. What puzzles you, Earthman? Well, I... I uh, well, I, I can't see you. I can feel that you're here, but I can't see you. There is no necessity for you to see us. It is sufficient that we communicate with each other. Yes, but talking to you is... Well, it's not like talking. It's, uh, well, it's uh, as if it were all happening inside my brain. It is. That is how I'm reaching you, by telepathy. Do you remember what happened to you before you blacked out? Yes, I think so. Uh, there was a sharp sound, like a bullet hitting the canopy. It was not a bullet. It was a ray. It was necessary to stop your flight. We have so much to tell you. Well, first tell me about my ship. Is it lost? No. It is such a crude little ship. Crude? Easy for us to repair. It will be returned to you. And you will return to Earth. Because you are the Earth's only hope of survival. Hope of survival? What do you mean? I will show you. What you see on this screen before you is a panorama of your own universe. Far greater in scope than an Earthman has ever seen before. Observe. Observe where the line is pointing. Planet 3, Star 5, Galaxy C, Sector K. 
Is, uh, is that the Earth? No. That dot, that speck you see revolving in the vastness, is your sun. A star who surfaces 12,000 times that of your Earth. Your Earth is not even visible here. What? How did you know we even existed? That was our problem. We first became aware of your planet when we found atomic dust in the upper atmosphere. We traced it to your Earth. It was that important to you? Quite. We determined that you were setting off atomic bombs. That's why the Galactic Council has quarantined you. Quarantined? I don't understand. How? How are we uh, quarantined? We have sealed off your planet from the rest of space. But we have surrounded it with a force screen. When that screen has accumulated enough particles of atomic dust, your Earth will explode. Your civilization, you, all life will disappear forever. Listen to me, Earth man. Listen. We've had our own wars. Wars that almost destroyed our civilization. But we have finally outlawed war throughout space, including Earth. Now listen carefully, Earth men. If you continue to make atom bombs and hydrogen bombs, each many times more powerful than the last, and if you start making war with them, exploding them, it would upset the balance of the entire universe, throw all space into chaos. This, of course, we cannot allow. And the force screen with which we have surrounded the Earth will prevent it by exploding the Earth itself. Remember then, Earthmen, if you start an atomic war, the Earth will at once be completely destroyed. Warn them, Earthmen. Release him, Zegdon. Yes, Commander. Earthman, you will rise from your seat and open that door. Descend those stairs, Earthman. You will now enter the chamber to your left. There's your ship. Get into it, Earthman. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. While we were communicating, the patrol ship has returned to where we picked you up. And now you will be propelled toward Earth. Close your canopy. Open aperture. Warn them, Earthmen. Warn them. Fire! RJX-1 to tower. RJX-1 to tower. Come in. RJX-1 to tower. Come in, tower. Tower to funny man. You loaded, kid? How did you get in on this frequency? Listen, this is RJX-1. RJX-1 coming in for landing. Give me landing instructions. Tower to funny man. Impossible that you're RJX-1. He's 10 hours overdue. Get away from the area. Area cleared for bomber practice approaches. This is Major Westfall and RJX-1. Come on, kid, give me landing instructions. I have no fuel, I'm gliding. What? Hey, hey, yeah, I see you now, Major. Wait a minute, I'll restrict the area. Okay, RJX-1, go ahead. Approximately six miles north of field, clear area for 10 miles. Being cleared, what's your altitude? 10,000, estimate six minutes to land. Tower to RJX-1. You are clear to land. Runway 9. Wind east, southeast 15. Roger. Coming down. Hi, Hank. Bill. Bill, Bill, what happened? Hank, you won't believe it, but you've got to. I know you won't believe it. It'll knock you over. No, Ed, just take it easy, Bill. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Have the ship gone over by Geiger counters for radioactivity and seal it. What? Oh, yes, Hank, you better mount a 24-hour guard on it. Look, what did you run into? Plenty. Listen to me, Hank. They said the Earth would explode. They said it was the end for us. They said that? Come on, let's go over to my office. You gotta believe me. Read it like an order, Bill. My what? office. I want Major Donaldson to look at you. The psychiatrist? Hank, you've got to listen Come to on me. Come over to the office. Uh, 
Well, that's the story, Major Donaldson. I see. Well, Hank, you believe it, don't you? Well, Major, what do you think? I'm not sure. Uh, Bill, these men from Mars... I didn't say they were from Mars. Did you hear me say anything about men from Mars? No, you didn't. All I'm trying to tell you is this. Whoever those people were, they knew all about us, everything. And they warned me. Our atomic bombs are a danger to the universe. One more and we're going to be the juiciest galactic 4th of July of all time. Explode, finish, gone. Like that. How do you like it? All right, Bill, roll up your sleeve. Oh, now, forget it, Major. All I need is a couple of drinks. Sorry, Bill. Sorry. Not right now. Let the, let the Major give you a hypo. Now, look, I got a drink coming, a lot of drinks. Later. Come on, Bill, but... the sleeve. You heard him, Bill. All right, yes, all right, if it's an order. Go ahead. There. You'll be okay in a few hours. I'm okay now. Sure. We'll leave you here, Bill. It's all right if Bill sleeps in here, isn't it, Colonel? Sure. Yeah. Well, maybe you'll believe me tomorrow. You'd better. Come on, Major. He'll be okay by himself, Major. He's been under a strain, but he'll sleep a long time. Uh, you better explain it to his wife somehow. I'll talk to him tomorrow. Tough. I've heard he's one of the best. He's the best. The combination of nerve and loyalty and lightning reflexes that comes once in ten million times. What about it, Major? How does Bill look to you? I can't tell yet. Maybe a week, six months, six years. I'll need a whole lot of time with him before I can tell. I see. Well, we'd better get some sleep, too. All right. And don't worry, Colonel. He's a strong boy. Best nerves I've seen. I'd say things will be all right. Delusions like... Bills latched on to, well, delusions like this. Major. Yes, Colonel? Major, when you make your charts for Bill, diagnose him and treat him and do all the things you have to, when you do that, Major, consider this. Yes? How did he keep that plane in the air for 10 hours? For 10 hours, Major, when he had fuel to last him only 10 minutes. <laughs> Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson, and tonight starred Frank Lovejoy in The Outer Limit by Graham Dorr, adapted for radio by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Featured in the cast were Charles McGraw as the Colonel, Jeff Corey as Major Donaldson, Stan Waxman as Zeglon, and Ian Wolfe as Zill. Special music was arranged and conducted by Del Castillo. Actual flight details were authenticated by rocket test pilot Gene May, Sergeant Hartley Caldwell of the Air Force Section of the Armed Forces Public Information Office and by the Douglas Aircraft Corporation. Next week. You were on the Baltic Sea within sight of the Soviet coast where your Russian wife is secretly waiting to escape with you to England. And on the cold, dark waters behind you, an armed patrol boat is about to discover your small sailing craft. If it does, you will never escape. Next week, we escape with Roger Bax's thrilling and timely tale of a man and woman who dared to defy an entire government in order to be together, two if by sea. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape. Two all-star bouts are promised on CBS this Wednesday night. Bing Crosby faces Fred Allen across the CBS mic to battle it out on who's funnier, singers or comedians. And in the second attraction, Gracie Allen and a smashed fender team up against not-so-gorgeous George Burns and a guilty conscience. This Wednesday also brings...